This video is a little longer than the ones I normally do, but hopefully this example will give you a sense of what's involved with queries and functions and parameters. So I've got a list of available pizzas, I've got a list of the pizzas that have been ordered, and then with Power Query I can spit out a table that shows the pizza ordered and a list of the toppings. But the bit where the custom function comes in is I've also got the ability to exclude certain toppings. So here we have the topping is excluded, there's no basil in this one. And because I'm using a custom function I can apply that against lots of different pizzas in this list. So here's the monster pizza with no cheese, click refresh and the cook gets a list of the ingredients required excluding the cheese. So this is the aim but how do we do this? So I'm going to talk you through and introduce you to the concepts of custom functions and parameters in Power Query. So we're starting off with this menu of available pizzas and you should always really name your tables if you've got the choice. So I'm just going to call this table menu and then I'm going to use Power Query just to load that table in. So from table range. Here's my loaded table. I'm just going to make a copy of this. And essentially it's this copy that will ultimately become my chef's list, the list of ingredients and pizzas and toppings. So let's just rename this chosen pizza and toppings. Don't forget to press enter. And as you can see, the toppings are all across the top. Now, whenever you see the same sort of categories across the top, you've got to think unpivot other columns, which is one of the greatest features to come into Power Query ever. I do not need this column, so I can remove that and I'll just rename this one. So we've now got our list of pizzas and what I'm going to do is, you know, I want to filter by the pizza that's chosen and I want to filter out the ingredient I don't want. But in order to turn this into a custom function, one of the things I need to add to make the custom function work really well is a parameter for the pizza chosen and a parameter for the topping excluded. So here we go, we'll just name this first parameter chosen pizza and I can pick a text data type and just as a, a current value we'll put in the monster pizza and click OK. So here's my first parameter and if you are going to build a custom function automatically, you really do need to build in these parameters. Then my second parameter will be the topping that I want to exclude. So excluded topping. Again, we'll make this text. And let's say for now, I just want to exclude cheese. and click OK. So I've got my two different parameters ready and set up. So let's just use them now in my filters. So I'm going to pick which pizza I want, text filter equals, and now I can click on this little drop down box and pick one of my parameters and it's actually dropped in chosen pizza. I could pick a different parameter if I had one. And there it's now filtered by monster because monster was my parameter. I'll do the same thing for toppings. Text filter does not equal because I want to exclude this particular topping. And again, I pick the parameter. And this time I say the excluded topping, which in this case was cheese. And cheese disappears from my list. Now the reason I've used those parameters 
is so that I can then in the future set up a custom function. However, when I return this, I actually want a list with sort of commas in between. I don't want a column of values, I just want a nice little list. So I'm actually going to click on the function step, that adds a brand new step, and the Power Query or the M code formula for this to turn this into a nice list is text.combine. And then you just type the name of the column that you want to combine into a list. And I can close the bracket and then press enter. And here's my list. Ah, but I, for I forgot to put a comma in. I want to separate them by a comma. So there's an optional argument in text.combine. And here we go, quotation mark, comma, quotation mark. And now my commas are in there. I then just turn this to a table. And here's my list that I want to return into my chef's list. And I'll just call this the chosen toppings and change it to text. So this is my little routine that I want to run against every pizza that's ordered. And in order to run this against every pizza that gets ordered, I'm going to turn this query into a function. Okay, so I click on the create function button and I have to give it a name. So, you know, normally you see people calling functions beginning with something like F or FN, um, chosen toppings. And then it's basically showing me that that function needs a couple of parameters, but it sets up this little folder. Okay, I'm just going to move the order of these um, items around a little bit. I'll put the parameters at the top and everything else sort of sits outside this folder. But I've got my chosen toppings and my excluded topping. They're then used in the query and the query is linked to that function. So in the future, if you make any change to that query, the function will change as well. So I'll just load these um, as a connection to get started. So I've now got this little reusable function to apply to every single pizza that gets listed in this order table. So in order to now generate my chef's list, I need to load this order table as well. So from table range, let's just call this something a little bit more meaningful. Let's go chef's list. Okay, so I'm going to add a column and invoke that function. I want to grab that function and basically just adds an extra column. I don't need to give it a new column name. I'm just going to pick my function and it says, right, what do you want to use for your chosen pizza? Well, it's the things coming from the pizza column. And what do you want to use for your excluded topping? Well, it's everything from the column called exclude. And then I click OK. My function gets triggered. And then I just click expand to get the chosen toppings. And there we go. There's my list, excluding Basil. So that little query or that little custom function has run and grabbed me my list of ingredients excluding Basil. Let's load this, close and load to. I'll go and pick a table and I'll go to the existing worksheet and maybe I'll just click down here somewhere and click OK. And there's my list. Pepperoni pizzas ordered, exclude basil and there's the chosen toppings. And then I can just add as many pizzas as I want to the order. I could do the monster excluding cheese. Right click. Refresh. And there's the monster excluding cheese. I could do hot chicken. Okay. Right click. Refresh. Ah, I've hit an issue. Okay, because I haven't excluded anything my query is not working. So I'm just going to double click 
to go and edit that query. And yeah, there's an error here. So it seems to be that the nulls are causing a bit of an error. So I'm just going to do a quick replace and say, OK, rather than um, keeping those nulls, I'm just going to do a right click, replace values, find the nulls and just leave that empty so it gets rid of them. OK, hopefully now the rest of my query should work. Yep, that seems to be working fine now. And I'll just close and apply. And there we go. This hot chicken and all the items are in there because I haven't excluded anything. So, are you ready for some even trickier M code? What if I want to exclude more than one ingredient? Let's see what happens if I currently try it. Okay. So if I right click refresh and I'm trying to exclude basil and onion, you see the list of ingredients includes basil and onion because it's seeing basil onion as one thing it's trying to exclude. It's trying to filter that list by the word basil onion. So it's not working. So what do we do to fix this up? It does require tweaking one of our steps because anything I do to this query called chosen pizza and topping will then flow through automatically to my function. So if I need to make a change to my function, I make a change to this query. The two are linked together, which is really handy because you don't have to delve into the M code of your function. So I'm just going to rename this step. Choose pizza. Okay, that was the filter for pizza. And then this filtered row step. This is the step that I need to fix because it's trying to filter this column for the word basil onion. So that excluded topping parameter, that's this element that I need to fix. Okay, The excluded topping is coming through as the single word basil onion. I need to break that apart. Here's basil onion. I need to break it apart into two separate items. So here we go. Let's go to the filtered row step and just rename it just so it's obvious where we are. And we'll just name this excluded list of toppings. So I need to actually add a custom M formula in here. So text dot split and that's going to allow me to split the word um, basil and onion into two separate elements. Ah, it's asking me for um, two arguments because I forgot to put the actual delimiter in here. So it's uh, quotation mark comma quotation mark and I don't need that bracket. Um, and press enter. Ah, but I do need an extra bracket on the end, another right parenthesis. So press enter on that. And while it's split apart, it's not doing what I expected to do. And that's really because you can't use this type of, you know, filter does not equal to against two items. I actually have to use one extra formula to get this to work. And the formula I need for this is list.contains. So that list, that column called topping, I'm going to filter it where the list contains either the word basil or onion. And I just have to refer to the column called topping in that formula. So list.contains, oh, and I need another right bracket on the end. So just put the extra right bracket. So my default parameters are monster pizza and cheese. So this is now filtering to only include cheese, but I want it to exclude cheese. So I've got to put not in this item. That now is showing me all the items that aren't cheese. And now that gets converted into my function automatically. And my function is now run against my data. And it's actually excluding basil and onion. So let's take a look. Yep, there's basil and onion. 
and it's gone. So let's just test this out with a couple of other pizzas. Let's say the monster pizza will exclude onion and cheese. And the hot chicken pizza will exclude jalapenos. Um, and let's exclude the hot sauce as well. And now when we run this query, it filters out all those items and we're left with just exactly what we need. So I hope you find that useful. If you do, follow accessanalytic.com.au slash blog and find out about all of these sorts of things and how Power Query can really make your jobs easier. Thanks.